Okay, looks like we're recording, looks like the mic is working, and um, I think we finally got all our technology pieces set up. So this is a good example of what happens in the classroom when you're using technology to teach. So just go with the flow, do your best. It, I mean, just got to just go with it. So again, my name is Alyssa Sells. I'm from the State Board. I work for the State Board for Community and Technical Colleges. I'm the e-learning program administrator. And as Jackie mentioned, I do travel around and do some training. I also do some teaching online. Some of you may have taken the online State Board Canvas training course. I know I have at least one of my students, Chris, um, here in the classroom. Yeah? Okay, so there's four or five of us that teach the class, so you may or may not have had me specifically as your trainer. And um, so we're here today to talk about Canvas, now that we're all logged in, right? Okay. And we're going to talk about Google. And we're going to talk about a tool in Canvas called Collaborations. And what I'm going to do is get over to my presentation. And actually, let me show you the classroom you're in first. So you all logged in uh, from your courses menu. Select Google Docs presentation. That's where you want to go. Most of you had it up on your screen, so I'm pretty sure you are all in the right place. From here, it's a linked icon. You can either um, just click the image or you can click on modules and it will take you into the course materials. So here is a link to um, my actual presentation. It's in Google Slides. So you can click there and get to the presentation and open it in Google. This is an example of what it looks like embedded in a page. So you can also do this for students. So this is the same presentation, just a second way to present it to you. So you can either have a student click the link and go to the presentation, or you can physically embed it in the page. And let me show you what else is in here, and then we'll get started. Um, there's integrity recording that we're going to watch in just a minute, because what we're going to do today is simulate a flipped classroom environment. And I'll explain all this in just a second. And um, there's a recording in here of an entire presentation that I did at another college. So that presentation's already there. Assuming that this recording turns out well, what I will do is flip out the one that we're recording today and put that one in there so you have the actual one that you participated in. And then there's some um, information down here. Um, just later when you're trying to go back and do this on your own, I've given you some helpful links. These are specifically for Google. So you can go here and find, um, if you don't use Google Docs, because we're going to use that today, some of you might not be familiar with that. So there's some help stuff here, um, Gmail help, and how to create an account and log in. So the little helper things are here. I've also given you a section of Canvas information. And this is just a collection of links from the Canvas guides. How many of you are familiar with the Canvas guides? I want to see lots of hands. That is your best friend. You know Canvas updates about every three weeks, right? Sometimes you log in and everything looks different. You scratch your head and go, oh, no, I don't know how to do that anymore. <laughs> it's kind of a bummer. It happens even like days before presentations and then you panic. It's happened to me. I'm like, oh, no, I have to relearn what I need to teach. So make sure you're friendly with the Canvas guides. I think the URL is guides.instructure.com. And you can go there and look up anything. But I've already pulled out a few of the things that apply to what we're going to talk about today. And they are always the most up-to-date information because Canvas maintains those documents themselves. So always go there for help first. Hmm? That's under Pages? This is a page. When I go to Pages here in my menu, all I get is you know, another, another, um, another technology in the classroom slide. Just okay, well, where I came from was Modules. Oh, okay. So I, I accessed the page from, um, from here. Yeah, and I'm under helpful resources, right, okay. and I clicked on it from here. Right, okay. But the reason why it says pages is because it's built as a content page. Right, okay. So um, if you ever get lost and can't get back into modules or don't know where you're going, if you know the name of the page, if you come over here and do show all, you can scroll through this list, and if you know the name of your page, you can go exactly where you want from here. So there's lots of different ways to get moving around in Canvas. I know. Okay, so this brings up a good point about removing tools from your students that you don't want them to have or don't want them to use. So pages might be one that you might want to consider removing from your toolbar, as well as your files. 
just these are just little side extra notes that you get just because we're kind of off topic already. Um, all of your files upload to Canvas automatically unlocked and accessible by students. You know that, right? Yes? Okay, so if you have something you don't want your students to be into, in your file manager, you need to remove the files button from them. And you also need to go into your file manager. And I would maintain maybe just one file folder that has all of your locked materials in it, because then you can just lock the file folder. You don't have to lock each individual document, but you can lock the documents. So just little, little side things there. All right, let's get back to why we're here. And we're here to um, talk about technology in the classroom. And I'm actually going to flip over here. I'm not going to open it from the site. I'm going to go straight to it. And I'm going to put it in present mode. So now it's full screen, so you guys hopefully will be able to see it better. As I get older, my eyes get worse. And I can't see even when I'm standing right next to it, which is very sad. How did you get it in present mode? Um, you go to the view menu. And you click the little top thing that says present. Want to see it again? OK, you, present. Uh, it's because I'm in Google right now. I don't know which page you guys are looking at it on. If you're looking at it on the embedded page, you probably can't do this. If you click the link instead of the embedded page, it, hopefully it takes you and opens that up for you. Jackie, did you have? You're in student month? Okay. Yeah, it's a document though. It's open. I have it set open public on the web, so you should be able to get into it. Um, but you should be able to see it from up here. Just fine. All right. So technology in the classroom. Integrating technology and instruction using real-time collaborations. That's the official long-winded and wordy title of what we're doing today. So we're going to talk about trying something new, getting out of our comfort zones a little bit, because let's face it, regular, traditional lecture is B-O-R-I-N-G, oftentimes for our students, right? I've sat in a classroom before. I know it can get kind of boring. And unfortunately, I have to stand behind the podium for part of today and, and lecture at you. But um, there is an interactive piece that we'll get to. So I hope you won't be bored in your seats. So today we're going to explore how to use integrated instructional technology. And there's a difference between just using technology for the sake of using technology and actually integrating it into your lesson and making it an important part of what you're doing. Did you need something? No. Oh, hey. Tell me All right, Jackie's leaving us. Bye, Jackie. You guys know you have quite a gem in her, right? Yeah. Yeah. Give her lots of hugs. She loves you guys. All right. So, um... We're going to investigate, like I said, Google Docs and Canvas collaborations. We are looking to refresh and inspire some of our more traditional teaching methods. And this particular presentation is focused on using an integrated technology of Canvas collaborations in a flipped classroom model. And I'll explain all of that in just a second if you don't know what that is. But it applies equally to face-to-face -face classes as well as to online. Everything that we're doing today can be done online. So um, don't think that you're not going to be able to use any of this just because you're teaching fully online or because you're teaching face-to-face. -face. You could still use Canvas collaborations in your face-to-face -face class if your students have access to, to Canvas. You guys have web enhanced classes? I'm not sure what you guys do here. OK, so everybody has access to Canvas. So um, there's lots of different ways to use it. And what I would just challenge you to do is to take what you can, just glean whatever works for you and use the parts that work and anything that doesn't work with your style of instruction or your classroom mode, just don't worry about using it, okay? All right. So before we get way into the lesson, um, I call this one rolling with the punches. And we already had about 15 minutes of rolling with the punches this morning. So um, yeah, when we teach with technology in the classroom, does it always go smoothly? I should see a lot of heads shaking no. I've used technology in my classroom for a very long time, and I can tell you from firsthand experience, it's not always smooth sailing. Sometimes there are problems. So I have two rules that I try to follow, and we're going to put those into practice today. The first is that I try to have some sort of a backup plan in case my technology doesn't play nicely, because guaranteed it isn't always going to. So. Um, don't always just rely on having your presentation in Google. 
or somewhere stored online in Dropbox, bring it with you on a physical thumb drive just in case. Or if you're used to having it on the thumb drive and you forget your thumb drive, your backup plan is to have it stored online in Google somewhere where you can access it if you've misplaced um, you know, those special little things. I have a big long string on mine so I don't lose it. Um, but I have mine right in Google right now. Um, part of my backup plan for this too was that if for some reason the link wasn't functioning, we could go straight into Google if we needed to. So there's lots of different ways to come up with a backup plan. Just pre-think it a little bit just to make sure that you at least have the number with you for your media services or your e-learning department in case you actually need some help. Okay, And arrive early so you can get stuff set up. That's a good plan too. My second rule is is that there are almost always problems. A lot of us had problems logging in this morning and accepting invitations and that kind of stuff. If we encounter anything else like that during the presentation, what we're going to do, because I have no helpers in the room, it's just me, me versus you. No, I'm just kidding, it's not me versus you. But really, there's a lot more of you than there are of me, right? <laughs> and if I stop and take 10 or 15 minutes to help one person, the whole presentation gets derailed. So what we're going to do is if you encounter a technology problem that we can't overcome in just a few minutes, our backup plan is look on with a friend, okay? So in the end, if we have four people looking on with a friend in one row, that's totally fine. You're not going to miss anything. The very last activity we're going to do, we actually really only need one person in your group who is logged into a computer with internet access logged into Canvas and has their Google account set up, okay? So we only need, you know, like a fifth of you to, to actually be able to successfully complete the problem, or the, um, what we're going to do. Okay, make sense? All right. So what is real-time collaboration? Well, that just means that multiple people can work on something at the same time. So. Google allows us to do something that we couldn't otherwise do. It allows people to transcend distance and time to come together and work in the same document real time. They can see each other typing. They can respond to each other, um, can have simultaneous input. So that's what we mean by real time collaboration, that it's something happening actually at the same time, but you may not physically be together. You could be physically together, and we're going to use it together today in the classroom physically together, but the activity that we're going to do, you could put out to um, an online classroom and do it equally as well. Okay, uh, let's see, what else? Okay, has everybody heard the word blended classroom? Okay, that's another word for hybrid. Blended seems to be the more contemporary term for that. I don't hear the word hybrid as often. Traditionally, a hybrid or blended course is a course that displaces some of the face-to-face -face instruction with online materials of some sort. It's usually up to the instructor how much of the class face-to-face -face time is displaced. It's usually not more than 50%, um, although that line is getting blurred a little bit. So if you are teaching in a blended or hybrid model, that means if your class is like a traditional Monday, Wednesday, Friday class, you may only be meeting with your students two days a week and be sending them off to do stuff online on Friday or whatever works for, for your course or your discipline. All right, so what is a flipped classroom? A flipped classroom is basically a blended or hybrid model classroom with a twist. It's just a little bit different. So um, students are asked to review course materials before they come to class, and that's in preparation for some something active learning you're going to do in the classroom. So you're not lecturing to them and then sending them away to do practice activities. You're giving them the content up front, asking them to prepare, and then when they come to class, you use the content to do some sort of an active, active learning um, instructional activity. So. Um, could be a discussion in class, could be review of the material, so maybe you're going to play a game using um, the, the vocabulary words from the lesson. It could be a hands-on activity, that's what we're going to do today. I'm actually going to play a video for you in a minute. We're going to simulate the flipped classroom 
and I'm going to show you the video that I would have asked students to pre-watch before they came. But since I didn't know any of you and we weren't all registered, we're just going to do it together today and pretend. Okay, so integrated technology. I mentioned earlier that integrating technology is different than just using technology. So integrated technology is technology that actively engages your students. We want them to use it to learn and we want them to put their knowledge to use. It's a technology that can facilitate collaboration in or out of the classroom. And it's a technology that facilitates, um, excuse me here, activities that would otherwise be difficult. Like I said, across time and distance, we all have busy schedules. We all have different schedules. And sometimes students can't just meet up at the same time. So uh, we can get them to do fun, collaborative things that you couldn't maybe do in an online class because they weren't meeting together and they didn't know each other. Okay, let's get going here. Okay. So I told you we were going to simulate a flipped classroom. We're going to watch a video right now, and it's going to be the simulation of the individual online learning component that you would have been asked to do before you came to class. And I'm not 100% sure about playing the video from here, so I have it queued up as my backup plan, and we'll just, um, whoops. We'll just go to my video since I already had it queued up. We tested it earlier. And... So what you're going to watch right now is how to create a Google account. So we're going to watch the video. That would be the prep piece. And then the students, the in-class learning piece would have the students come to class and set up their own Gmail account. If you already have a Gmail account set up, you won't have to do that part of the lesson. But if you don't have a Gmail account set up, you will be setting one up during this class period, so make sure you pay attention to this video because we're actually going to do this when we're done watching it. And this video was recorded for another group that I presented to. It was Project Idea, so if you hear me refer to Project Idea in there, it's just because that was the day that I made this recording. Real time. Let's Before you can access Google Docs, you'll need to register for a Google account. In a second, includes a brief demonstration of how to set up a Google account and it will also include the basics of creating a Google Doc. I'm recording this video using Tegrity. Tegrity is a course capture tool, which means during this recording, you will see what is on my computer screen while you hear me talking about it. Right now, you should see a Firefox window open to <coughs> Google.com. Recording videos for your class can help you communicate core course concepts to students. Reviewing the videos before class allows students to prepare for class activities, which is how we're going to use this recording. You'll watch this video individually, and when we meet at the second meeting, you'll participate in a group exercise that will help you learn more about how you can use Google Docs to collaborate with colleagues and to engage your students. At the convening, we'll also be showing you how to work with Google Docs using the collaborations tool in Canvas. What is Google Docs? It's an online word processor that lets you create and format text documents and collaborate with other people in real time. Before you can access Google Docs, you'll need to register for a Google account. You can do so by going to google.com. Let's do that now. Here I am in my browser. I've selected Firefox for today. I've typed in google.com, and I've come to the Google page. If I had an account already set up, I could click on the sign-in button and go straight where I need to go. For today, to set up your Gmail account, I'm going to go ahead and have you click on Gmail, and we'll click on this button, Create an Account. And you'll just fill in the information that it asks for, your name, create yourself a Gmail address, fill in a password, and at the bottom, you'll just click to the next step and follow the screens as they walk you through the rest of the account creation process. My account is already set up, so I can just go ahead and sign in. And I'm going to do that now. All right, so I'm signing in. So here's my Gmail account or my Google account. And from here, I'd like to go to my Google Drive. The drive is where all of your documents will be stored. It kind of looks like the file manager on your computer. If you want to create a new document, you can click on the Create button. And from here, you can choose if you want to make a new folder, a document, a presentation, a spreadsheet, a form, or even a drawing. For right now, I'm going to go ahead and click on a document, and it's going to take me to a blank document template that kind of looks like a blank Word document. The first thing I'm going to do is hover over File and click on it, and I'm going to rename my document so that we can tell what it is. And I'm going to call this Project Idea 
all my changes are going to be saved in this drive. So I'm going to go ahead and type here. This is a document for project idea. We can share information using Google Docs. Okay, let's check my spelling. Uh, looks like my typing's not that great today. Okay, so I'll correct that. Okay, so now that I've typed in some words and you can see those, let's look at some of the other things that we can do. I'm going to go ahead and highlight this like we would in a regular Word document. I'm going to make it bold. I'm also going to come over here and make this a lot bigger so that we can see it easier. And I'll pick a different color just for fun. Okay, there we are. This is a document for project idea. We can share information using Google Docs in blue. All right, so we can also do some other regular word processing things, like we can center or right or left justify, depending on what you need. Your document spacing is here. You also have some numbering and some bulleting that you can play with. And there's a print button. There's an undo and a redo button, and you can also paint your format. Let's investigate some of the tools up here. So on file, this is the one where we renamed our document, but we can create a new document from here. We can open an existing document. We can make a copy, and um, we can do a print preview. We can print. On edit, we have our undo and redo buttons again. We can copy and paste. From view, you can change how you're going to see your document, whether you want to look at it in print layout or with a ruler, or look for spelling suggestions. On the Insert tab, you can insert images, links, equations, drawings, and some other things like headers and footers down here towards the bottom. On Format, you can do some of the same things that we were um, doing just a minute ago with the addition of Strike Through, Superscript, Subscript. On Tools, you can research and define and do a word count. And this one I think is kind of interesting. It's Translate a Document. I haven't actually tried this. But you're supposed to be able to translate your document into a different language, and I think that that sounds uh, like it would be pretty neat. On table, you can insert a table. And then on help, I just wanted to show you that you can um, click on this docs help here, and it will bring up some articles for you, some different things, like an overview of Google Docs, and you can read some more about this if you need some additional information. Okay, so we have our document, we've looked through some of our tools, and again, this is just the basics. We're not going to go through every single type of document, this is just a basic Word document. Now that we're done with our document, we want to share it with some other people. And I'm going to go up here to the share button, and I'm going to click share. And from here, I'm going to decide who I want to share with, and what type of privacy I want on this document. So. If I want this to be private and only have the people that are listed have access to it, I can keep it that way. Or I can choose a public link, meaning that you can sign in without authentication and anyone can look at that. If you want anyone with the link to be able to see it, um, you would click this. And um, I think with this one you still need to have a Gmail account, it just doesn't log you in. With the public link, um, when I tested it, Last night, it seems that I could send um, a link to my regular email address and not be signed in and still let me access the document. So that was pretty cool. And then on private, you can check this one and just include the few people that you want to see the document. And then they will have be asked to sign into Google Docs when um, they receive your invitation to join this document. So I'm just going to say for now, anyone with the link. And um, I'll save this. Okay, the next thing we want to do is decide who we're going to send this to. Uh, just for ease here, I'm going to send it to myself so you can kind of see how this works. You'll just pop in the email address of the person that you want to send this to, and notice this is my Gmail account. And I'm going to decide what privileges this person can have. Can they edit the document that I've started, or can they only view it, or can they only make comments? I'm going to say that they can have editing privileges. Okay, when I'm all done selecting what I need to know, I'm going to leave the box checked for notify, notify people by email, and then if I wanted to add a personal message, I could do that. I'm going to go ahead and be done with this as it is for now, and I'm going to say share and save. And then I'm done. And if you look in the lower right corner of my screen, you'll see that I'm
me to me, inviting me to share a document. And I'll just click this link. This is Project Idea Demo. That's what we named our document. And then it opens the document for me, and I can begin working on it because they have editing privileges. So you could be simultaneously working in this um, with several people at the same time if you had shared uh, the link with um, several colleagues. So this is a pretty cool setup, and it's a great way to share information, and it's a lot easier than going back and forth with emails and um, trying to get everybody's opinion. You can just edit right here and um, get people's thoughts and comments. All right, so that's about it for the basics of setting up a document. Don't worry if you didn't catch all of this the first time. You're going to be getting mm -hmm. some hands-on practice next week, and we'll post some additional resources for you to review. Your practice is today in like two minutes. Look at them and want to know more, you can. And you'll find those support materials either in the Project Idea Communication site or in the Project Idea Canvas training course. Thanks for listening. Bye. Okay, so your support materials are where? I already showed them to you. They're in the Google Docs classroom, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, we had a few people join us. Um, are you, did you guys get logged in? Yeah. Okay, so log into your computers if you want to. Um, go to yvcc.instructure.com to log into your Canvas account. Use your full email address and the password you use when logging into Canvas computers. And then, um, were you registered into this class before you came? Did you let Jackie know that you were coming today? No. Okay, so um, we will just take a short detour here and. Um, if you guys will give me your email addresses, I will um, invite you into our classroom. But let me find where I'm at first. Um, you're also welcome to look on with a friend if you don't want to um, join the class right now. It's fine. But I can easily add you just by adding people. You guys can. You guys know you can share all of your practice classes and your master courses with colleagues, and you just click on um, Add People here, and um, Hopefully it will let us add users. Um, maybe I can't do that. Maybe you guys don't have it set up for that. When I do it at mine, it cannot be added because this course is concluded. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, oh, it's, you know what? Sorry, I'm in the wrong classroom. Blah. Too many Canvas windows open. Let's see where I'm at. Sorry, I've got, um, no, that's not it either. I can't remember where we opened it. Here we are. Okay. So now we're in a non-concluded course. If you conclude a course, you no longer have access to doing fun stuff. Okay. So now I'm going to add you. Okay. Email address? D-link at Y-B-C-C dot E-D-U. Okay. Did I spell it right? Yeah. Okay. And next. Oh, okay. That's fine. Okay. So in just a few minutes, um, it'll take a minute to process. On your, um, oh sure, I'm sorry, I didn't see you. Come in. Okay, so what's your email address? Okay. Okay. Okay, G K O E S T L E R. Okay. Sorry, sometimes my ears and my fingers don't work very well together when I'm typing. All right, so sending you an invitation as well. Okay, and I saw, um, David, I saw your name pop up. Uh, Gordon, I see your name in here. So in just a minute, you guys should be able to go when you log into your YBCC Canvas accounts on your dashboard. You should have a blue button that says accept. Just go ahead and click that and it will let you into the course materials. All right, so let's get back to where we were here. Sorry, too many windows open still. Um, okay, here we are. Okay, we're going back to our presentation. I've got my presentation open in Google so we can do the, the big screen here. Okay, so. We did integrated technology. We just simulated our flipped classroom. And then um, typically I bring a lot of humor into the classroom and I would gently tease my students if they hadn't done their assignment. So I would actually ask students to say, you know, if they did or didn't watch the video and I would shake my finger at them nicely and tease them a little bit. But I guarantee you when you're teaching in a flipped classroom, 
and students start to see the outcome of what you're doing and the fun stuff that they need to know that other information for, I guarantee that it will um, make them want to participate and make them want to do that little bit of homework before they come to class because they do want to get involved and, and participate in the discussions. Okay. All right, so we are going to set up a Google account, which you just kind of saw a demo of. So you saw two things, setting up a Google account, and then you saw um, working with a Google Doc a little bit. Google Docs is just a lot like working in Word. Most of you are familiar with that, so if you think about it in those terms, you don't need to be scared of using Google Docs because it should be familiar enough in that it's similar to what you're used to. It just doesn't have all the same features that we're used to in Word. Okay. How many of you already have Gmail accounts? Okay, so a good portion of you. All right, so for those of you that don't, let's just run through and get your Gmail account set up because you need that for the next part of what we're going to do. So you are going to open a browser. Go ahead and go to Chrome or Firefox. If you go to Chrome, it typically defaults to the Google page and then you can um, work from there. So just go to google.com. Yeah? I have Chrome on my computer. If you go to... Okay. Okay, if you... Um, here. Okay, just because the button's not on your computer doesn't mean it's not there. If you come down here to the Start button and click Start Buttons and go to All Programs, and if you come up to... Um, I think it was in the Applications... Was it applications? Okay, if you double click applications, um, you can see Google um, and Firefox in here. If you don't have Chrome, just use Firefox, it's fine. It's no big deal. Um, I don't know why it wouldn't work on Internet Explorer, but Canvas doesn't like Internet Explorer, so I wouldn't recommend doing the next part of the lesson in Internet Explorer. So do you guys have Firefox on your computers? Okay. Hmm. Computer login for campus. Oh, are you playing something fun? Did you start a video? Oh, interesting. Okay. All right. So, those of you that don't have Gmail accounts, go to google.com and you are going to. I'm already signed in, so um, it doesn't show it here. Um, 
but you should have that, that create an account button that you saw in the video. Click on that, go through all those little steps. Make sure you type that garbledy gook stuff at the bottom that, show, that um, tests to see if you're a human and not a computer just randomly creating an account before you click on that. Let's see if, maybe I should just log out. It should let you go. Um, did you not send it to your? Um, it said oh you you set it to send it to send it to your phone. Okay, it should have let you choose. It's been a long time since I set mine up. Okay, let's see. Okay. So I'm already logged in, but you should have a create button. If you can't get your account created today, it's no big deal. You can do it later. Just look on with somebody else. Okay. We'll just leave just a few minutes to do that. I think there are enough of us in the room, though, that already have the Gmail account set up that we should have plenty of people that we can still do the rest of um, the activity with. So do you guys need, how much more time do you need to get your account set up? Just a few minutes? Or you guys want to move on? Move on? Okay, all right. It's okay, really don't panic, it's no big deal. You can come back and watch the video again and set your account up later. So the next part of what we're going to do is, um, and I'm not gonna go into present mode because we're gonna have to go into another screen here in just a second, is we need to register your Google account in Canvas. I have not registered mine in my YVCC Pro YBCC profile yet, so hopefully we'll be able to do that part together. So let me go to our classroom. Okay, so this is not it, because that's my state board. I think I have you guys open in Firefox. Here we are. Okay, so go back to Canvas. Yes, sir. Can I ask a quick question about of course. Uh, Google accounts? Yes. Does it make sense, like I already have a Gmail account. Yes. Does it make sense to create a new one just for work? Yes, it does make a lot of sense to create a Gmail account just for work. Yeah, that's a great way to keep stuff separate. Is that, I mean, it's really, you can organize your files and keep it separate from within your account, but I think it, for efficiency, it's really a lot probably safer and more protective for you if you use a separate account that's not mingled with your work, with your personal stuff. So yes, good if question. I, if I register or link my Google Docs to Canvas now, uh -huh. using the account that I've already set up, uh -huh. my personal account, will there be a way for me to change that? You can go into Google and undo what, or you can go into Canvas and undo what we're going to do now okay. and replace it with your new Canvas, Great. your new collaborations Gmail account Great. later. So yes, you can undo what we're going to do now and, and change it. All right. All right. So come up to settings in your profile area. Did you see where I clicked up here on settings? Okay. And I don't have any services registered in here. So I need to register Google, so I'm going to click on this Google button right here. And yeah, it's okay to use your personal Google accounts right now because you can come unregister Google and then you can re-register with a different Gmail account later. Okay? I just clicked the button to say that I wanted to use Google. Okay, did you see that? I just clicked Google Docs. Now I need to authorize it. And I think the next step is it makes you sign in. I have so many logins for so many different things, sometimes I forget where I am and what I'm doing. Yes, log in to your Google account through there. And then um, when you get to this screen, just say allow access. And then it should pop up that little Google icon under my registered services, and there it is. Later when you wanna undo it, just come here, hover over it. You won't see the X until you're hovering. Just exit out and delete it, and then you can start over. Okay, everybody follow that? Did y'all get that far? No? You wanna see it again? No? Okay. All right, we just need to make sure that we keep enough of the group in, in it that we have enough people at the end to, to be able to do 
our activity. All right, so I'm going to go back to our classroom now, back to the Google Docs presentation area. Okay. So we'll come back here in a second. My actual presentation is on one of these darn tabs. Okay. So we just completed this step. The link to reading about registered services is, is here in the presentation. You'll also find that link in those extra resources that I showed you earlier, the Google resources and the Canvas resources. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is now we're going to use the collaborations tool that's in Canvas. Has anybody used it before? <coughs> Couple, just one, okay. So sort of tried it, but weren't sure what you were doing. <laughs> I haven't used the Etherpad feature. I've only done the Google Docs. So we're already logged into Canvas. We are going to go to the collaborations um, tool. And rather than just talking through the steps, I'm actually going to show that to you. So let's go back to our classroom. And you should have collaborations right here. See it? And in different classrooms, the buttons may be in different orders, or you might not have all the buttons because teachers can add and remove those and customize what their students see. So click on collaborations. Okay. And we want to start a new collaboration. I think this must have been, um, oh, this came in from a previous presentation because I've used, um, I copied this classroom in from a presentation I did at Edmonds and somebody started a collaboration there. So um, I'm showing you how to set this up. If you guys all do this right now and set up the collaboration, we're going to get a thousand collaborative um, documents in here. So I'm going to be the only one that does this here right now. If you want to actually do this, please go to a practice classroom or somewhere other than our Google Docs um, classroom. Make sense? Okay, because I don't want to end up with, with 40 documents in here. So I'm going to start a collaboration. And um, there's two ways. There's Etherpad and Google Docs. We're not going to do Etherpad today. We're doing Google Docs. So from my drop-down menu, I'm going to say that I want it to be a Google Docs collaboration. And then here you give the collaboration a name. I'm not using anything real original today other than to label it with your um, college name. If you want students to have a description or a place to read directions about what they're supposed to do, you can put that here. Again, real original, put your directions here. Okay. The next part is we are going to start collaborating. Once I click this button, it's going to pop me into a Google Doc, which if I go back to my Google account, I will see a new Google Doc there. So from here, I'm creating a Google Doc. Okay. You guys won't be able to access it just yet because I haven't showed you the next part of adding people to the collaboration. So here we go. Okay, so I already named it, so it put the YVCC name on it. So I could go back to my Google account now and this file would be there. And we could type something in here. Yeah. You cannot do anything but a Google Doc from the Canvas Collaborations tool. It will only start a Google Doc. So if you want a slides presentation yeah. or a form, you can't do it using the Collaborations tool because as far as I know, it will only populate a document. Okay. Um, there is another way to do, um, to use Google. You can make your own form or your own spreadsheet or your own whatever you want the students to have access to. And if you provide the link to that and share it so that when they click on the link, they get access to it, you can put that link directly into a module as an external site or an external tool. And when they click on that, it will open up your document. And um, you could have them fill out an online form. I actually attended a presentation at InstructureCon in June that was really cool. It was a fisheries program and they had been really struggling with how to collect data because they had to go out to these ponds and they would hand write all this stuff and everything was just really really messy and nobody could read anything so when their campus switched over to canvas 
they started investigating different things that they could do. And um, one really cool thing they did is they made their classroom mobile. They put everything on iPads and they waterproofed them. They put them in special waterproof cases that could get dropped in the ponds and not get ruined. I wouldn't recommend that. But um, they did show in their presentation a picture of their iPad sitting in you know, a tank of water. It was, I was like, whoa. Um, so they did that, and the students would go out to um, these pond areas where they, had wi they made sure the students had wireless access. And then they used Google Forms or um, the, the Google Spreadsheets to create um, a data form thing that the students could fill in. And the students would fill the information in from the iPad from within Canvas while they were in the field. So it eliminated a whole transcription process for them. And then all of the data was typed, everything was organized, they had a spreadsheet that they could go back to. So yeah, that's a really powerful tool to use in your classroom. But it wasn't done through the collaborations tool, it was just a straight up link to the document. So. I teach in the Wayne program. Okay. And we actually wanted to use it in the same way that you were describing. Yeah. But I, I was just hoping that the collaborations tool would do it. But well, you know, it's actually skipping a step. You don't need the collaborations tool for that. Yeah. I mean, this, there's multiple ways, as you know, in Canvas to do the same thing. And, um, you know, if you, if you just want to skip the whole collaborations tool, you don't even have to use that piece. But if you're just using... Um, a Google Doc, using the Canvas collaborations tool is a great way to keep those collaborations organized because it does the same thing with them that it does with quizzes and assignments. It groups it in its own little um, area. So a student could always go to collaborations, just find the one they need and click on it. They wouldn't have to search through all the modules and remember where the link was. So um, like I said at the beginning, take the pieces that work for you and integrate those into your instruction. And if the collaborations tool part doesn't work for you, then go ahead and just use the straight up link for it. And then using the link to a document is your backup plan in case the collaborations piece is malfunctioning. You can take that, um, there's a share area in there where you share it. There's a link in there that you can copy and give to your students. You can post it in the classroom. You could put it in an announcement. You could put it in your module. You could um, send it to them through their Canvas inboxes, whatever works for you. Okay, but that, that could be your backup plan in case the collaborations part isn't working. Yeah? How are you seeing people using this tool um, around other campuses? Because we have discussion with the other mm -hmm. places that people can comment with each other. So, so um, our activity today is actually going to be to brainstorm some ideas on how to do that. So you're already way ahead of us. So start thinking on a way that you might apply it to your discipline. Mm -hmm. And um, I'll share maybe a few ways that I'm familiar with, um, like the one that I just, the story I just told you about the fisheries is one example. When we're done with our collaborative activity, um, we will go around the room and share what everybody came up with. And then this will be a living document for you. You guys can come back and refer to it and um, use it and make more contributions to it. It'll just be there for you to use. Okay. All right. So we're in our document and um, we're not going to do anything here just yet. What I need to do is get you guys access to the document, right? Yeah? Okay, so I'm going to come back here. And now when we come into collaborations, you can see that it's here. So um, I'm not sure if you guys can see it until I add you. Hold on. Ah, come on. I need to add you. I need to edit. Sorry. Click the wrong button. Okay. So to get you guys access to that same document that we just created, I need to add you guys to it. This is so easy. You click a button. So this is everybody that accepted an invitation to this classroom. I just click plus and it moved Wendy from the left side to the right side. Now Wendy should be able to click that link and open up that document. So I'm just gonna do everybody that's on here. Okay, so everybody that had accepted an invitation to join this classroom and got in, you are now in here, and I need to save it, so I'm gonna say update collaboration, because as you know, anything that you do or add or change or edit in Canvas, you always have to update or save. And as soon as this finishes processing, you guys should be able to go in our classroom to the Canvas collaborations tool. It's being slow. Come 
Oh, it's not liking me. Come on. Okay. Oh, page error. I don't like that. Okay, let's check it and see what we see. Okay, can can somebody go to the collaborations tool in our Canvas classroom and click on this link and see what you get? You got in, okay? All right, the other thing I'm going to do is, oh, look at all you peeps in there with me. All right, okay, I'm going to click on share real quick, and I'm going to check my share settings and make sure you guys are all in there. It looks like everybody's in. You've got editing privileges. So Canvas automatically does that part for us. Okay, we're done. Yes, we are still here. Yes, sir. Uh, you click on this blue button that says share. Okay, and you can do this from within your document. And it's on presentations. It's on your spreadsheets that you build. That's the important part is to make sure that it's shared. What we did is we shared it with the people that had access to it through Canvas. If you want to go into Google and make it public on the web, you could do that and then anybody could find it. All right, so. But if, if you don't have a Gmail account, you can't do it. No, okay, that's actually a really important thing and I think it might be my next slide. Okay, so let me put this back up and present so we can see this bigger. Okay, so here are the things you need to know to make this work. Okay, you have to ask if your college has the Google app enabled for Canvas. Jackie obviously has that set because it works, so check mark that one, you're good to go. Each collaborator needs to have a Google account. We attempted to do that. Some of you were successful, some of you already had accounts, okay? Each collab collaborator needs to add Google as a registered service in Canvas. So that means you and all of your students. Each person needs a Gmail account and needs to go into their Canvas profile and add Google as a registered service. And you could make that a little Tegrity video recording. They could do that on their own before they come or you could do it with them in the classroom. Okay. If you want the document to be editable, you can turn on your share settings to allow people to have the link to edit it. Canvas automatically does that piece for you. That's one of the auto things. As you saw when we added everybody to the classroom, it automatically gave them editing privileges. You can go back and change them though. But if you're working in straight in Google and you create a Google document or a form or something outside of Canvas, you need to go and adjust your share settings because the default in Google is private. It will stay private until you change it, okay? And um, if you do have any problems with the Canvas collaborations piece working or it doesn't default to editing, just go back to your Google account or to the Google document and share that publicly and it usually gets rid of anything, any stumbling blocks that the student might have getting in. Question? So from just the Google, um You, okay, if you want to join our actual collaboration, you need to go back to Canvas mm -hmm. and click on the Collaborations tool in the vertical tool, tool menu on the left-hand side of your screen. Okay? All right. Everybody clear on that? Okay, now's the fun part. I get to stop talking, although I do have fun when I talk. Um, you guys get to try this now. So... We just created a document for us. I'm going to go in and type in some numbers so your group knows where to type. What we are going to do is go into small groups. I don't care how big the groups are. The idea is not to be a group of one. One is not a group. <laughs> okay? Army so, of one. And, well, you can be an army of one, but we're not doing an army of one. We're doing <laughs> groups of more than one. Okay, so do a plus one and find a friend. If you want to do larger groups because you want more interaction and more brainstorming, fine. If you want smaller groups because you like it to be a little more intimate and just share ideas with one person, that's cool. We are going to brainstorm ideas for how to use this and apply it in your classrooms. 
So you can be discipline specific if you want. You can be mode specific if you want. So if you want to say, I would use it in math to do this whatever with, you can, you can go that route. You can say, I'm teaching a face-to-face -face class and I would use it this way in my face-to-face -face class. You can be very general and say, this sounds like a really fun activity and would work for anyone, okay? So we'll take some time to do that. And I don't know what time it is right now. Um, let's say 10 minutes, because I think we're supposed to be done at 10.30ish. So let's give ourselves 10 minutes to do this. You can type directly in our document. And, um, okay, so somebody's already started. So um, that's fine. <laughs> I won't put group numbers in here. It's okay. Find a place in the document for your group to start working. Start typing. You guys can watch each other work. You can cheat if you want to. You can look at other people's stuff and be inspired. No cheating. Inspired by other people's ideas. Okay? And maybe you can give it a twist and apply it to your specific discipline or something. I saw a hand over here. Did you have a question? I was just curious, can you erase what somebody else is doing? Yes, it's collaborative. Yeah, so be careful. <laughs> yeah, okay, so another thing to note is this can get messy when you're using it in a classroom with a bunch of people. This is about as many people. This is about as many people as I would probably want in one document at any given time. <laughs> so um, if you have a large class like this, you could actually do a couple documents. You can still give everybody access if you want, or you could just give access by group. So you could set up groups and assign groups to a document, but people that aren't in that group won't be able to access it. So it's up to you how you use it. So find your groups and get started collaborating about how you think you might be able to use this tool. Brainstorm some ideas, take a few minutes to do that, and then type them into your document as you go, okay?
That's okay because we can um, come back here and read this at any time. Um, there's something I want to show you in assignments that allows you to take a Google document and have your students submit that to you through the assignment tool, and then it will show up for you in the speed grader. Cool. All right, so who wants to be first? No hands. Your teachers, come on. Come on, I need a group volunteer. I'm going to pick you. All right, I'm sorry, Chris, I know your name. So it's either you or David, the two names I know in the room. So I'm picking on Chris. She was also in my training class online. Well, Shirley and I am really close. Okay, that's fine. We had, we thought we could do this documentation for meetings and everybody contribute. Accreditation reports, so everybody could, in our department, Group projects, although I have to admit most of us don't like group projects that well. But as instructors, <laughs> <laughs> we love group projects. We might like that, though. Oh, yeah, somebody figured out how to put an image in here. That's all right. I don't know who. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> Someone stole it. Looking suspicious. Sometimes we uh, have to have a discussion. But a telephone call comes in. How do you answer that telephone call? And that way they could actually write down how they would, one person would say, you know, I hate your guts. I mean, how would you just <laughs> click? <laughs> I'm just kidding. De-escalate. De De-escalate. De okay, great. All right, uh, next group. Okay, whoever's the group closest to this group, go. Okay, well, there's a bunch of writing instructors in here, so we can see lots of 
Oh, good. Classroom, obviously peer review or collaborative brainstorming, or question. Yeah, that would be fun. Yeah, the editing could go wild, so some of us might like to turn off the editing, editing. <laughs> the feature and just allow them to share comments, too. So we've had a pretty good list of stuff going. Okay, next group. Who's back there? Pick. Go. We briefly just talked about a way to um, have groups collaborate together um, in Google Docs with presentation and other So collaboration not using collaboration. Okay, using it as um, a tool for building assignments. Okay, the wine program. Do you guys want to report in on anything? Yeah? That would be fun. Okay, one more group over here. I don't care who it is. Same as the writing assignments. Okay, same as the writing assignments. Okay, how about a scavenger hunt? Canvas is mobile. Lots of students are mobile. Team people up with groups and have at least one person in your group who has a smartphone. Send them out on a scavenger hunt somewhere on campus if it's a face-to-face -face or a hybrid class. Or you could send them on. A, you could use it on a field trip. They could take notes while they were out and at the end you could have a collaborative document that had all the field trip notes in it. Uh, anybody else have any anything else? Okay, so we got pretty good um, selections, uh, selection of items. I would um, encourage you to get out of your box and do something new and different because students actually like this. Um, I've noticed with my own kids because I'm a mother of an 11 year old and a 15 year old um, my children are very used to interacting online. They're very used to it. My son will sit and play Minecraft while he has the iPad on FaceTime. So he's playing online with his friends, but at the same time he's communicating with them and seeing them play the game with him. So that's normal for this younger generation of students. They're used to being connected. They're used to working in groups. They like to work in groups, more so maybe than some of us do. I've never personally been a fan of group work, but that's just, I'm old school, traditional girl. Um, I'm warming up to it. I mean, it's fun once you get in it. I guess that's the part is get over your fear of doing it and just dive in and do it. Question? Um, I had that question earlier, and I'm not sure to how to answer that question. Um, I think that there might be some sort of a tracking tool in Google itself, but I'm not 100% sure where that is. Okay. Let me just show you real quick um, an assignment that I have set up in um, our Canvas classroom. It's just called Assignment 1. I'm in demo student mode right now. I have this assignment set to accept a web URL. So if you were... Um, working in a document and this is your student's assignment and they're going to share it with you. This is the um, code for the document or the URL to it. You can also generate um, embed code and embed it straight in a page like I had it earlier. But if you want your student to submit this to you, you can have them paste the URL in here and they submit the assignment to you. And um, it's turned in. We'll go look at that in just a second. I have a second assignment set up. And this one I have set for file upload web URL. And I also have it set to, um, you can't see it here because my demo student doesn't have a Google account. I have it set to um, let them go directly to Google and submit something from there. There will be a tab here that says Google Docs. When they click that tab, it will give them a list of their Google Docs. They click that link and it will submit that assignment to you through the SpeedGrader. Okay, so I submitted assignment number one. Let me get out of student view, and we're actually wrapping up, so we're just about done here. Let me just show you this last thing, and then we will be finished. Okay, I'm out of student mode, and going to my assignments. Oh, you dropped some money. Oh, I guess I have too much of them. Okay, you can take me out. Okay, so here's my assignment that the student just submitted. 
I go to the speed grader and hopefully my test student has um, made a submission. I don't have it set right now not to log in, but um, the, the URL that the student put in is here and it normally generates um, an image, like a preview of it, so you could look at it quickly here. If you have a rubric attached over here, you can grade it real quick from here, or you can go click the URL and go open the document itself and you can comment in your students' work for them. I, I've heard that that's an easier way to comment on students' work rather than using the speed grading comment feature. Do you know if that's true? It's up to you, it depends on what you're doing. Um, if you have your students working in Google and you're a writing teacher and you have them submitting from Google, it's you can only go to Google and make the comments because you can't use Crocodoc, which is the other Canvas feature you're talking about. Crocodoc works with Word files and um, spreadsheets and PowerPoint. So it depends on what you've asked your students to do. Does that make sense? Yeah, okay. Anybody have questions before we wrap up? Um, let me put throw my email address up here real quick. Let me make sure we didn't miss anything on our slides. Okay, Etherpad. I haven't really, I haven't really worked in Etherpad very much. So, what did we learn today? We learned about using Integrity because I I did a Integrity video with you and you could record. We learned about Canvas, Google Docs. We learned about the collaborations tool. We learned about collaborating in real time. Not only did we learn about it, we just practiced it, okay? We've learned maybe some new technology skills that we can use in our classrooms regardless of the mode we're teaching in. And we collaboratively shared and created lots of learning activities for your very own students or working with colleagues, too. So here's my email address. It's acells at sbctc.edu. And if you have any questions, please feel free to email me. I'm happy to help. Um, David's going to email me his question about tracking the, the um, editing stuff in Google, and I'll see if I can figure that out. And um, if I find the answer to it, I'll get the information either back to Jackie or post it in the classroom. And that Canvas classroom that we had for this presentation will live on. It's there for you. Use it for whatever. Um, go back and reference it. Um, Jackie, feel free to add people to the classroom. Um, make sure they know that nobody's, I mean, there's, there's not going to be another presentation, but we'll, yeah, we'll put the integrity video in there, and that's actually a good point. I'm actually going to turn the video off, the recording off right now, so, okay.